Welcome to our worship for this Palm Sunday and into the Holy Week. Lift up your heads to the coming King, bow before him and adore him. Sing to his majesty. Let your praises be pure and holy, giving glory to the King of Kings. We not only gather today, but look forward very much to Easter Sunday, next Sunday, the 4th of April, when at half past ten we return to open and shared worship in church, just at half past ten for all ages to come and be together with us. We look forward to meeting you, as well as our recording of worship and service online. The Palm Sunday thinks of the scripture prophecy of Zechariah, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one that they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son.
The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures for ever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures for ever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter, and give thanks to the Lord. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. Mark chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. Blessed is the king who comes. 
As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. God of all, you gave your only son Jesus to take the form of a servant and become obedient to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility, we may be with him in his glory, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. Our prayers to the Lord on this Palm Sunday. Lord, come into this place, bring hope and be a cause for joy. We pray for your mercy and goodness upon this world. We need you to be our King to cry, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save us, Lord, from sinning. Watch us day by day. Help us love and serve you. Take our sins away. Make us more like Christ this day. He who became the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, begin your work in us that we might cry, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. We pray for your light in this world, Lord. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Those who follow you will never walk in darkness, but they will have the lights of life. Lord, bless your church in all the world. May it be true to its calling. May we be those who rejoice in the Lord always and give thanks to the Lord for he is good and that his love endures forever. Bless churches as they begin to gather for open worship again. Bless Cologne as we begin next Sunday, the Easter day, to meet and worship, to sing your praise, to be your people, to know your love. Lord, cause fellowship to come afresh. Cleanse your church from all that is not acceptable in your sight. And maybe as we gather each Sabbath day, cry, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We pause to pray for loved ones and friends. And we think of those dear to us. Lord, you're the God of compassion the Lord of all mercy and comfort. We quietly think of those whom we commend to the Lord. Added to these we pray for Debbie, Margaret, 
Infant Fern, Francis, and Helen. For those who grieve and need God's mercy through the darkness, that they will not walk through the valley without the light of God's love. Particularly we pray this week for the loved ones of the late Mary McCandless, her husband and family and friends. And for those who continue to grieve the passing and loss and memory of loved ones. Come into our hearts, O Lord. Teach us your love, your truth and your kindness. Lord Jesus Christ, as you enter to Jerusalem and even to its holy temple, Lord, even enter our lives and make us to be the temple of the living God. Come to us that we might be a people acceptable in your sight, worthy of your praise, worthy of your name, worthy of that calling. In Christ, who did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, became a servant, humbled himself, obedient to death, even death on a cross, and help us to raise our voices to praise him afresh, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. transgressions and now I am free all because Jesus was wounded for me dying for me dying for me day on the cross he was dying for me And I see all oh, because Jesus was dying for me. Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. Now the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some sly way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, 
reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the telling of the story of the cross, there are some differences between the Gospel writers. And this is natural, as the Gospels were written many years after the events took place. Yet they all agree on the essential elements of what occurred. And we are able, as a result, to gain insight into the sacrifice of Jesus, of his own life, for the sins of the world. Mark tells us that the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only two days away, and this tells us that things were coming to a head. For Jesus, the Passover represented the sacrifice of the blood of the unblemished lamb to rescue people from slavery. And so, his willingness to die to save people from slavery to sin and death meant that the sacrifice needed to come about before the Passover began, so time was getting short. For the religious leaders too, time was getting short. They were desperate to get rid of Jesus, for he opposed all that they held dear, and they were determined to keep hold of their power, authority and wealth. They needed to kill him, and yet he was popular among ordinary people, so it had to be done stealthily, and it had to be done before the feast began, when emotions were high. So for all concerned, there wasn't much time left for action. The religious leaders were fortunate that one of Jesus' own disciples, Judas Iscariot, was willing to betray his master. We are told that he went to the authorities and offered to betray Jesus. Naturally, they were delighted and promised to pay him for doing so. We shall never know what led Judas to betray his master, but the promise of money may well have been a factor. Other possible reasons have been set forward, but the reality is that Judas, in spite of being with Jesus from early on and witnessing his healing miracles and hearing at first hand the teaching of Jesus, was ready and willing to betray his master and to allow him to be put to death. It is no wonder that when the arrest had been made, Judas realised just what he had done, but by this stage there was no going back, and he had to deal with the consequences of his action in betraying his master. As we reflect on the betrayal of his master by Judas, There is a warning that our world today needs to hear. Down through the years, terrible things have been done in the name and cause of religion. Today we are appalled that people could do such things, and to do so in the name of God. Yet, they were extremely sincere in their motivation. They could justify what they were doing, and they could claim a clear conscience for anything they did. Our world today is no different, and there is ample evidence in many parts of the world 
of people carrying out acts that can only be described as barbaric, as horrific, as inhuman. And yet they are doing so in the name and for the cause of religion. We are unable to influence those who act in such a way, and so all we can do is to pray that God will overturn their actions and bring relief to those who suffer, many of whom are Christians, living in places where they are tiny minorities and paying a heavy price for their faithfulness to Christ. Jesus is always the example to follow as we think of the response to make where violence in the cause of religion is carried out. When he suffered at the hands of those who sought to silence him, he did not respond in fighting back, but offered his own life in place of theirs, and on the cross could say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus shows us the way of forgiveness and love and self-sacrifice, and this is the way that we should go if we are to be true to him in life. As we move into Holy Week, our focus should be on Jesus and his willingness to offer his life that we might live, and as we do so, to follow his way as we go through life. We can find encouragement also in the act of self-giving love offered by a woman named as Mary in John's account of the incident in pouring an expensive jar of perfume over the head of Jesus. John's account says it was the feet of Jesus and occurred at the home of Mary and Martha before Jesus entered Jerusalem. Such differences in detail need not concern us as we reflect on the extent of this act of self-giving love towards Jesus. Our attention should be focused on the level of this gift of love for it signifies an extravagance that we would find hard to comprehend. We are told that the perfume poured on Jesus was worth a year's wages for a man, and it is hard to take in. This whole jar of perfume could be taken and poured over Jesus. It would seem that many of those present found it hard to accept and complained that it was a waste, for it could have been sold and the money given to the poor. John's Gospel puts the blame solely on Judas, who was the treasurer of the band of disciples. Yet Jesus chastised them for decrying the woman's actions and told them that the woman was preparing his body for burial in advance. There would always be poor among them, and they can be helped at any time, but he would not always be with them. Jesus made clear that Mary was pouring out the perfume in preparing his body for burial ahead of time. This was a gesture of self-giving love, a love that does not count the cost. And the example of Mary is there for every generation to look up to and to aspire towards. Jesus was only too clear about what lay ahead for him, and he knew that suffering Agony and death were only just around the corner, and he saw in the action of Mary a wonderful act of love, of generous self-giving, and a powerful testimony to her concern for him. There are times when we must simply forget or set aside the sensible, logical way of looking at things, and this was supremely one of those times. The disciples were right to be concerned about the poor, and we too ought to be concerned about them as well. But there have always been poor in the world, and no doubt there always will be. This means that there is ready opportunity at any time and in every place to do what is needed to help the poor and the needy. Jesus, though, would not always be there for much longer. And if anyone was to do anything to show love and concern for him, it had to be done then. And Mary took the opportunity that presented itself. 
This was the one time she could render a special service for the Lord, and she did not hold back. She gave the most valuable item she had as a fitting token of her love. The opportunity would never come again, for within a short time, Jesus would be nailed to a cruel cross at Calvary. This simple act of love was recorded and in the years since then has continued to remind us all of the need to show our love for the Lord in very practical ways. In stark contrast to the miserly approach of the disciples, Mary's extravagance and generosity has provided a wonderful example for us to follow. The challenge for us at this start of another Holy Week is to consider how we each one show our love for Jesus and all that he did for us on the cross. What is the most valuable thing we possess that we can give to him in order to show our love for him? No matter what the outer circumstances of our life may be, the most valuable thing we possess is ourselves. We can give material things in plenty, but unless we give ourselves first of all, everything else we give is simply wasted. This is what St Paul was thinking about in that lovely chapter on love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 when he said, If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Ourselves, the love of our heart, is the most precious gift we can offer. So if we are to be like Mary, we must give our hearts to the Lord in love and service, offering to him all that we are and all that we have as a fragrant offering to Christ and thanksgiving for all that he gave for us. When Jesus went to the cross, He suffered and died for us because of his great love for us. When we give ourselves to him, we will be giving him the best and the most worthwhile gift that we have to offer. So let us offer him ourselves and let us also allow him to make us people he can use as examples and witnesses to the world today, just as Mary was all those years ago. As one of the great hymns of Holy Week puts it, Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. May we each echo those words today, and may we offer him our heart, now and always. Amen.
Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ draw you to himself and grant that you find in his cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. Amen.